Episode 4 All the corpses with lumps of flesh missing terrified the people because they did not know when they would come face to face with the killer. Rumours spread that there was a cannibal in their midst. On examination, the lumps of flesh missing were always the edible parts, so the victims could only have been killed for cannibalism, if not a human sacrifice. Soon, the people could stand it no longer, and masses crowded to the royal courtyard to protest to the king. The king sympathized with the people, but at the same time, he needed to protect his food source. He inquired, How can you tell it is a carnival? Just tell me who it is, and I will capture and punish them. The people were disappointed with the king's evasive response, so they went for help instead from Minister Kalahati, who was known for his honesty. He was so honest that even the king had to treat him with respect. The minister promised that within seven days he would put an end to the killings. He assembled his officers and had them hide in various locations to capture the killer. From that time forth, the cook had to be extremely cautious. Nevertheless, he could not evade the eyes of the officers, who were spying on him the whole of the time. One night, when he was slicing up the body of a young woman, the minister's officers caught him red-handed. They tied his hands behind his back, whipped him, and dragged him down the street making a public proclamation that the man-eater had been caught. Crowds gathered round in anger and wanted him lynched immediately. They pummeled him with a rain of sticks and stones until he was bleeding all over. The minister identified him as the royal cook, but suspected that he did not eat the human flesh himself. Did he mix it with other meat to make an extra profit? Or did he kill on the king's orders? He interrogated the cook, asking, Have you lost your mind? You have killed so many people for their flesh. What have you done with all that meat? Have you eaten it, sold it, or used it for sacrifices? The cook was forced to confess the whole story in the light of all the evidence. It was not my idea to kill people for their flesh. I only got it under orders to serve it as food for the king. Everyone was shocked that the minister's suspicions had been confirmed. But, as it pertained to the king, he had to treat the accusations with discretion. A false accusation might damage the king's credibility. He told the cook, I can understand you doing this under the orders of the king, but would you be willing to testify this in front of the king? The cook told him, if it was necessary, he would tell the whole story to everyone in front of the king. The minister had the cook locked up for his own protection and convened a meeting for the next day of all councillors, courtiers and the public to make a statement about all that had happened. They took military control of the kingdom to prevent any riots, putting soldiers in key locations to prevent uprisings from any supporters still loyal to the king. Next morning, when the cook was released from his cell, a basket of human flesh was hung around his neck, and he was followed by a mob screaming and shouting in the street 